Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I'd introduce some um, one of the key um, one of the key parts of special relativity, which is the loss of simultaneity, and and um, related to the train paradox, which probably a lot of you have heard about, which is basically about a train and fitting onto a bridge or tunnel or a ladder fitting into a barn. There's many variations on it, but it's all the same thing, and. It's very closely related to the loss of simultaneity, which basically tells you that things that happen simultaneously in one frame, one reference frame, don't happen simultaneously in another reference frame. And it's derived from the postulates of relativity. So I thought I'd introduce this through a problem from Warren. And so here's the problem. Two blocks, two bombs lie on a platform a distance L apart. As trains as a train travels by at speed v, the bombs explode. The bombs explode simultaneous, simultaneously in the platform flame, frame and leave marks on the train. Due to the length contraction of the train, we know the marks on the train are a distance. Ooh. Okay, ignore that. Gamma l apart when v in the train's frame, because this distance is what is length contracted down to so the given distance l in the platform frame. But in the train's frame, the bombs are l over gamma apart. How come this isn't the distance between the marks? So um, if you don't know what it, um, gamma is, it's basically just gamma equals 1 over root 1 minus of v squared over c squared. And basically um, this factor is used a lot because it's seen everywhere because it's um, like t is equal to t naught gamma and l is equal to l over l naught over gamma. So it's basically um, length contraction and time dilation, and those are the factors that are used. And this factor comes up a lot, um, as you might expect, since it's part of one of the um, one of the most basic parts, m most basic things you hear about in special relativity. So that's what gamma is. And so now we'll show. Um, now we'll try to explain this paradox here. So. It says it explodes simultaneously in the platform frame. So let's actually let's actually draw this out. Let's say this is a train platform. We have a bomb here. We have a bomb here. And this distance is L. And there's just this train car. I guess. There's windows or something. And this train is moving along. And in our frame the bombs explode simultaneously. And then they're gonna be L over um they're gonna be gamma L apart on the train. Um I don't know, let's draw the train again here. And then the two marks of the bombs are gonna be gamma L apart in this frame because the distance between this if you link contract it um if you link contract this it's you're gonna divide by gamma and you're going to get this L here. And that's why the bombs are distance gamma apart, but if you consider the whole thing in the platform in the reference frame of the train, basically what this is saying is that this is this distance L is going to be length contracted by gamma, so it's going to be L over gamma apart. So it's going to be like that, which which doesn't make sense because we already found that it's gamma L apart. So you have to explain why this is um, different. So the key word here is simultaneously in the platform frame. So one way we can think about simultaneous is, so it's kind of vague, right? We don't have a concrete quantitative way or quantitative kind of way to say what simultaneous is. So let's, so we're in the reference frame of the platform right now. Let's assume there's some light source here. There's a light source here. And at some point, the light source starts emitting light and light will travel like this to this bomb and light will travel like this this bomb and this is right in the middle where it's L over 2 and L over 2 so then this um this allows you to say what simultaneous is right because light will travel in the same speed in both directions and so the bombs will explode when the light reaches them so now let's consider this setup in the platform of the train so in the platform of the train this the train is still and the platform here so if the train was, let me redraw this train, it's very crooked. 
So the platform of the train, if originally here the train was traveling at speed V, then here this platform is going to be, tra be traveling backward with speed V. And while well, the light source isn't moving, so it's still going to be here. Um, light source is here. But the bombs and the platform are moving along. So we defined um, the explosion of the bombs when the light hits them. So let's consider how the light moves in this frame. And this is where we use a postulate of relativity. Light travels in the same speed in all frames. So here, light travels with speed c this way, and light travels with speed c this way as well. So does it actually hit both of these bombs at the same time in the trans frame? It actually doesn't, because well, if, if you don't think of it as light and you just think of it as like baseballs shooting left and right, if this one, so in this frame, these bombs are moving to the left with speed V, right? And if we're shooting baseballs this way and this way at the same speed, obviously it's going to hit the one that's approaching the baseball first. So if you know about velocity addition in um, relativistic velocity addition, you might be like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense because in the frame here, um, it's also going to be moving at speed v, um, c, and in this person's frame, in the bomb's frame, it's also going to be moving at speed c, so it should just be um, the same speed and it should be simultaneous in this frame as well. But that, that reasoning is um, not actually correct, and one way you can see why the light, the light will actually hit this one first and make this one explode first is you can think about how fast this gap is closing the gap between the light and the bomb. And if you think about that gap only, then of course um, this gap is going to be closing at a rate of c plus v, and this gap is going to be closing at a rate of c minus v. So these are the gap closing speeds. And this might be a, a little bit difficult to understand, so you might want to think about that a little, and yeah. Actually, it's probably not difficult if you're new to special relativity because that's how it was introduced to you. But yeah, so so now so we've this is what the loss of simultaneity is here. So we've shown by um, defining simultaneity with the light hitting the bombs. We've shown here that in, in another frame, suddenly these bombs aren't exploding simultaneously, and this is exactly the reason why even if the bombs are L over gamma apart in this frame L over gamma apart and this is L over 2 gamma and L over 2 gamma even if it's L over gamma apart that why the marks aren't L over gamma because this one explodes and then this one continues going backwards and then explodes again making the distance longer so now we can actually um, write out the calculations but this right here is the loss of simultaneity. So let's write out the calculations here. So we want to find the time difference between when the bombs are hit because that's um, how much more this, um, this bomb here is going to go to the left and make the distance longer from the original L over gamma. So we define the gap closing speeds as these, and we can find um, the time it takes to get to this one and the time it takes to get to this one. Let's find t1 here. It's going to be, well, the distance it's traveling, the gap is closing is L over 2 gamma, and we want to divide it by c plus v. And here we do the same thing. t sub 2 is equal to L over 2 gamma over c minus v. So now let's just um, multiply this out and Actually, not multiply this out. Let's find the difference between them. So we have delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 is equal to, let's factor this out, of 2 gamma times c plus v minus c minus v over c squared minus v squared, which is equal to L over 2 gamma times 2v over c squared minus v squared. And so remember that gamma 
is equal to 1 over root 1 minus v squared over c squared. And we're going to use that to simplify this expression a little bit later. So, so this is the time difference. So, the, so we can calculate how much more this bond goes from the distance L over gamma. So it will be L over gamma plus V delta T, right? Because after that, the mark on this is going to be still because the train isn't moving in this frame. And then this one is going to continue moving leftward and then make a mark later. So this is equal to L over gamma plus L over 2. Actually, let's cancel the 2s here. So L over gamma times V squared over C squared minus V squared. This is equal to L over gamma times 1 plus V squared over C squared minus V squared is equal to L over gamma times C squared over C squared minus V squared. And look at this. This is equal to, so we can factor out a 1 over C and that gives us C over root c squared minus v squared. So this right here is equal to L over gamma times gamma squared. It's equal to L gamma, or gamma L. And this is exactly what we said the distance should be right here. It should be a distance gamma L apart. And this is from, this is directly from the loss of simultaneity because since they, um, over here, they, uh, they, Explode simultane simultaneously over here since um, Since we can think of it as light hitting them this one actually explodes later because it's moving away from light So well that doesn't really make that much sense, but it is moving away So and that's what causes this um, the Bombs to not explode like here and here which would be L over gamma, but actually makes it explode there and then make the bomb explode, the second bomb explode somewhere over here, making it match up. And I think this is really beautiful, and it's really fun to think about these paradoxes and figure them out. And basically, this is related to the train paradox because this, well, this is slightly different, but it's kind of exactly what the train paradox is all about. So let me draw uh, the train paradox for you guys. And so it's almost like this setup here. But basically, you have a tunnel. I don't know how to draw a tunnel. But so you have a tunnel, and then you have a train. You have a train going through. Um, apparently, the tunnel is clear, and you can see the train. And so the train is going through. And suppose the train has length L, and so does the tunnel. And if the train is moving at a fast speed V, then in our frame here, the train actually fits into the tunnel, right? Because it's going to be length contracted. And uh, and this is the rest length when it's not moving. So it's going to have length um, gamma L, which means it's going to be shorter. Sorry, it's going to have length L over gamma, which means it's going to be shorter. And it's going to fit into here. But in the, again, in, now, we're go now we're going back to the frame of the train. And in the frame of the train, this tube is going to be length contracted, and the tube is going to become a length of L over gamma, which means the tube is too small for the train to fit into. So, like this is, this might be a bit more tricky because you don't have explicit bombs exploding, and you don't um, and you have no idea what's happening. But basically, we can give it like this: we have two bombs that explode simultaneously in our frame. When the train is inside and the train should be unmarked because um the train is going to be shorter so and then we have to think about why it is um it is unmarked also in the frame of the train and this is because the bombs don't explode simultaneously right and in the frame of the train this one is going to explode first and then the train is going to even though it's longer even though it's going to be longer than the two the train is going to go farther in and then this one is going to explode leaving the train unmarked. And that's pretty remarkable. And it's there's all these kinds of different paradoxes that you can think that come from just the postulates of relativity. And I suggest you guys go look them up and just 
um, give your brain a tease. It's not even mathematically difficult. They're just really fun to think about. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching.